these cheeses for the first 30 days of their life um, live in what we've really recreated as a classic Roquefort cave. So that's 98% humidity, about 50 degrees Fahrenheit, and we maintain that temperature all the time. I was on my farm when I started to get a lot of calls. I was out feeding our calves. I picked up the phone. It was a cheese guru named Jason Hines calling. He uh, said, David, you did it. And I'm like, I did what? And he said, you've won the championship. So as it pops up, what it's showing us is our current production in the past 24 hours and the past seven day averages. This shows who has current permission to milk, how many total. So right now on our farm, there are 54 cows that have permission to milk at this moment. Each cow has a white RFID tag in her ear. And what that does is it communicates back and forth to the system to say, hey, this cow's at a smart gate and she wants to go milk. Does she have permission or not? Any cow that has permission over 12 hours since her last milking, it will actually give them VIP permission straight into the robot so she can bypass other gates over cows who have less priority access. It's a voluntary milking system, so when the cows feel the urge to get milk, they'll queue up and they're pampered by our milking parlor robots. The dairies in this region were actually retiring, so I felt like it was necessary to create our own dairy, and a dairy that would be looked at as the next generation of dairying. This dairy is fully automated and can actually operate from a smartphone. Cows prefer the robots over being milked by a human. Cows like consistency and that's what the robots offer. And they're also available to the cows 24-7. Our premium milk, the milk that we use for creating Rogue River Blue, starts in the autumn. So we set that date as September 22nd, the autumnal equinox. And this is when we start making Rogue River Blue. What's special about this milk is the composition of it. The solids and fats are equal, and it's just at that right place for us to create our blue cheese. The grand champion of them all, the one that won best cheese in the world this year, our Rogue River Blue. Um, and this is wrapped in a Syrah grape leaf that's been soaked in a pear spirit. We really reserve only fall milk for this particular product. And the cheese you're looking at right now is about 18 months old. It's something we're very proud of. It's a labor of love. It takes a lot to make it, um, but I think you can taste that in the cheese. This one actually gets inoculated about three months down the road when the cheese is actually made. Um, after that, tertiary inoculation, if you will. We hand pick these Syrah grape leaves in the June of every year, and we make a pear spirit in house. We soak these grape leaves in that pear spirit, let that settle for about a month, and then we hand apply approximately eight or nine of these big Syrah grape leaves that we picked from an organic biodynamic vineyard here in the valley. And we wrap them up uh, with a little piece of raffia here and let them sit at least a couple more months. The, the first thing you'll notice is how quiet it is here. So it's just really peaceful. You might notice over here the brush hanging from the beam. That brush is a massage unit. And so when the cow wants a massage, she can actually lean against it and it's motorized so it'll start to rotate and then massage her entire body from side to side it's really a great treatment and their eyes roll back they really enjoy it we have 120 milkers and about 250 cows yeah so she quickly became one of my favorite heifers when she was a baby um, and she became the lead cow and uh, here she is today she's about six years old and she's always looking for me when i come to the dairy so as you can see she's in the first stall here and looking for a little bit of attention our cows are just enjoying the locally grown grass um, that we get delivered by our local farmers and then in season starting in February, they'll go out on pasture, so they're primarily consuming grasses from our native pastures. I didn't point out, I called it an eco-conscious cow palace, 
And so you can see that we are solar powered here. Also, our lighting is all LED, so it's low voltage. And um, we really are conscientious of using valuable resources and really are about reuse and, and reducing. So the Rogue River Blue, the most distinctive blue in the world. One thing that people don't often consider when they're tasting cheese is, is trying to get a representation of each area of the cheese. And that would be scraping right here along the rind, certainly scraping the paste here, and trying to gather as much uh, surface area as you possibly can on one spoon. At that point, I like to visually inspect the cheese, certainly smelling smelling the cheese, and, and we want this particular cheese to come out as a little fruit forward, but it should be blue, and blue should be the first taste of Rogue River Blue. This particular cheese is tasted three to five times throughout its life. And then at that point, think about tasting this in quarters. That first quarter, I get that, that big blue bold flavor in my mouth. And as it starts hitting the back of the tongue, I start really getting the salts. Um, a lot of umami, a lot of savory notes in this particular cheese. A wonderful hazelnut taste in this one, which happens to be our steak nut here. And then I get some, some blackberries, some, some berry notes in this too. Depending on where you're tasting in the paste or the wheel, you could um, actually pick a Chardonnay, a Viognier is one of my favorites. And of course, we're wrapping the wheels with Syrah grape leaves, so that's a nice pairing as well. And being from Oregon, we love to pair Pinot Noir with it. And then there is an exceptional pairing uh, with dessert wines. So the dessert wines with the Rogue River Blue are also remarkable, as well as porters and stouts and farmhouse ciders. To be the first North American cheese company to ever actually say they won the world's best cheese is something really special to us and, and we thank everybody for helping us get there. This we share with American cheese makers. Um, it's, it's such a great accomplishment and it really showcases the American artisan cheese movement.